attack! <laughs> Hello everybody, it's the captain here. Welcome to my house. This is a bit like an episode of The Cribs, isn't it? Load up, come on in. No prizes for obedience. So yes, we thought we'd come to my house and show you my guitars and my amps in my music room and what I kind of do when I'm chilling out. So you just say hello to, uh, you met Lola. There's Mrs. A and baby A. Say hi. Where's that Anderton's onesie? She's not at work today. <laughs> She's got a day off. Want a cup of tea? Let's go. There's my fish tank. That's the other thing I'm into, other than guitars. I like fish. Do you want to, let me see what I can find you. Uh, everything has sharp eyes on them. Can't noir. Because once you've had black, there's no going back. <laughs> this is the coolest gadget that I own in my house which means we never ever boil a kettle ever again. We have instant boiling water. In America, you probably have this in every house ever, but in England Shire, that's pretty radical. You look at my moldy bananas, and the obsession with purple is Mrs. A. So I guess you want to see my fridge. This is my favorite current beer. This is Fuller's Honeydew. It's a good beer. If you can buy this locally or in your country, you should try it. It's excellent. These are Grace's water baby's pants that she wears when we go swimming now. Come upstairs. These are paintings from a drunk Belgian bloke that I met in France uh, many years ago and uh, really liked what he did. We have several. Um, they weren't as expensive as you might think because he was so drunk all the time that he virtually used to give them away. I think he's actually died now, which is a shame, but uh, never mind, Dave. I've got to show you one thing, though. Come and see when my baby sleeps. Check this out. It's a cool baby room. And it's shh, shh. Come see my baby, look. look. Shh. Hello, shh. Daddy's here. It's okay. Go sleepy. Bye-bye. So anyway, come with me. Because this is where the magic happens. Hey, buddy. hey buddy. How are you doing, man? <laughs> Good to see you. I live here now, so of course I'm always here playing a Daisy Rock guitar. Daisy Rock, that's Grace's guitar. She's oh. been purchased for that for when she is old enough. The gear tour starts here. We've got a just a stock Fender Blues Junior here. I uh, had that for a long time, that's very, very cool. We've got a Black Star HT1, uh, Black Star as a sort of a thank you for being uh, Black Star's biggest dealer in the UK. They made me a special LA one, because that's my name. This is cool, it's basically, again, it's a, it's a stock Marshall Class 5, um, but in a custom covering, uh, signed by all the members of the Chili Peppers. This I bought uh, from a charity auction that I was at. Uh, where the proceeds went to um, disadvantaged kids who, who uh, want to try and you know, make a better life for them by playing some music. But this is my Marshall um, 2x12 extension cabinet uh, that they gave me three or four years ago and they just said, what do you want it to stay on the front? And I went, I don't know, how about West Ham? And this is my latest purchase, which if you saw us on Facebook recently, you'll know this is pretty much what I'm using all the time now, which is a, a sort of an upgraded version of the Blues Junior in a solid uh, wood cabinet and um, a Vintage 30, uh, sorry, is it Vintage 30 or a Jensen? I can't even remember, but some sort of upgraded, I think it's a Jensen in there. Lee, tell them about that incredible black thin line you've got down there. Yeah, this, do you know what? I kind of surprised I haven't brought this in for a video, because this, this was when I was gigging in kind of like a heavy rock band, probably 10 years ago. This was my stock axe. So what is this? This is a 1997 Fender Thin Line American Telecaster with, um, as you can see, I've upgraded the bridge pickup to a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails. Uh, it's in pretty good nick, to be honest with you. It's got a few sort of belt buckle rashes on the back, but that's a beast of a guitar. This is uh, many moons ago, again, probably 10 years ago, I thought Daisy Rock was gonna be the next big thing in the world of guitars, so I set up a, a distribution company for them in the UK, uh, but I kept this as a um, memento of that time, and this is gonna be Grace's first guitar when she's old enough to play it. The uh, original Cap 10, I suppose, and the modern Cap 10. Uh, interesting, I don't know if you guys have seen, but Fender have just launched uh, an American Deluxe HSH Strat which is basically a complete rip-off of the one that I've been using for the last really? million years. I did not know that. Yeah. How much is it worth? Oh, um, 16, 1700 pounds, something like that. Wow. 
I'm useless with pedals, to be honest with you. I just steal whatever I think is kind of cool from the shop at any one time. So at the moment, I've got an Eternity Drive and a, and a uh, Echophonic, which is kind of a bit like a love pedal version of a carbon copy, I suppose, or something like that. Uh, what's that? This is nice. In fact, what I am going to do here is I'm going to get the certificate uh, for this as well. In 2004, Fender sent over one of their custom shop luthiers, a chap called uh, Yuri Shishkov, and he came to Anderton's with a, a, a 1954 NOS guitar, NOS as in like sort of a brand new immaculate new old stock. New old stock. And this was, uh, there's something special, if I remember rightly, uh, is the, the first time since 1954 where the unique knobs, switch tip, pick guard, tremolo cover plate and pickup covers have been retooled um, and manufactured using the exact formulas and materials from 1954. Uh, and then what Yuri did in front of my eyes uh, was a relic it. He showed me the sort of the secret to how you make a guitar look old. Do you know what? I need to get the guitar that started it all from my loft. We'll need to use the stairs because the elevator's broken. I hope you just speed all this up, dear. Note to people, I shouldn't normally leave guitars in the loft, but there we are. Get back in the room. This, and to be honest with you, you guys might be able to help me out here. This, all I know about this guitar is that it belonged to my dad and he played it when he was um, in his teens. So I'm guessing this means it must have been made round about, you know, 1950s, maybe mid to late 50s. The brand is Michigan and it's made in the USA, but it's a, it's a low quality kind of guitar. Sorry to say that to you guitar, but you are, I'm afraid. So I'm guessing it was probably some kind of catalogue guitar for one of the companies like K or something like that and probably got imported over to the UK and was sold as like a, a cheap um, Gibson copy. Um, Michigan obviously has got an association with you know old Gibson stuff and it's definitely got that kind of 1930s Gibson kind of vibe to it. Uh, it looks like I haven't restrung it since the 1930s either which is probably true. <laughs> tinny old sounding guitar but this is genuine this is not relict this is genuine beaten upness um, so if any of you guys know anything about Michigan guitars and you want to post in the comments section below I've never found anything on Google about them so I'd love to know <laughs> This guitar here is, uh, has sentimental value really. This was my father-in-law's Strat. It's an American two-tone sunburst ash body um, 2010 guitar that we bought for his 70th birthday and I've never seen a smile on his face quite like the day we gave him this, but he sadly passed away last year. So I have his, um, his, his American standard Strat, which is a beast of a guitar. The two Hofners, Probably a similar era, so 1950s, maybe early 60s. This one I think is called a senator. I'm never quite sure what that one is, either a senator or another senator or a president. And these are, I bought these just for fun really. I mean, they, I don't know if you can get this in the light, but some of the flaming on the back of these guitars is just stunning. And at the time I picked these up, they didn't really have much of a collector's value, so I think I paid 150 for this one and about 100 for the other one. <laughs> really bright kind of even better if it was in tune this is a 1972 Martin D35 which I bought from a dealer in New York as a 40th birthday present for myself so this is what a proper acoustic guitar is supposed to sound like you get that on YouTube is about four times louder than any of the other acoustics in here. It was a total impulse buy because it's got such a pretty top on it. This is a 2001. So what's that? 12, 13 years old, 12 years old. I must admit I bought this kind of completely on a whim because uh, I love the look of it and I think I was gigging at the time I think. Uh, in fact I think I was gigging in a, in a fairly heavy band and um, 
It just used to feed back non-stop for almost every time I plugged it in. Everybody should have a 335. And the last one, over in the corner there, is my Gretsch Electromatic. Um, I'll pass that to you, Lee. I forget what the model number for this is, but it's just the standard. In fact, I think it's probably even like an older discontinued model now. We played one of these at David's house, didn't we? Yeah, or probably a real one though. So this is the Electromatic. You can't really sort of... I pretty much bought this entirely because I wanted a guitar with a Bigsby on it because I just thought Bigsby's were super cool. But that's a fine example of Korean workmanship there and I like that guitar a lot, so that's kind of useful. So which two Little guitars? ukulele. Oh, you've got a ukulele. Little yeah. ukulele over there, <laughs> which at one point I did learn to play Stay Away to Heaven on, but then got bored of it and haven't picked Tally it up since. Uke. So you guys know um, Rob and I have been shooting videos now for three or four years. Um, is it four years now? It might be three years. I think I've got be. this idea that it was 2009 was when I first met you and then 2010 was when we first started yeah. shooting videos. Uh, uh, the Gibson versus Epiphone was the first, first yeah, shoot. The first ever shoot. So whenever that's up, that's the first time we ever met and, just, and I said to you, yeah. you have to be Captain Lee. You did. Because that sounds cooler than I'm Lee. So I was Captain Lee from that day on and it's kind of stuck. Um, and that year... But every year since then? Uh, yeah, well we, we then, our trade association, the Music Industry Association, started asking um, the public to vote for who their favourite music store was. And Andertons, uh, we won it that year, we won it that first year, through um, largely really due to the fantastic, amazing support that we get from all the guys that watch the videos. And that, you know, winning that and also seeing so many guys coming into the store and sending emails in saying how much they like the videos sort of inspired me to do more with Rob and we've kind of taken the channel and done more crazy stupid stuff and more we've videos. We've jumped on fruit. Bought better we've cameras. We've thrown things out of windows. We've run things over. Yeah. Fired arrows and stuff. We have. Set fire to things and play things. We have. So this year, well no, this, right now, it's September in, uh, right now as we're shooting this video, the nominations for the 2013 Best Music Store in the UK have just been announced and we're super excited because we've been nominated again, so thank you guys for whoever nominated us. Um, and, but now it's really a public vote and this year the competition's more than ever, there's more other music stores going for this than ever, so we really, 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 really would appreciate it if you guys would um, just vote to say that you like, you know, you think that we're the best store in the UK. You don't have to live in the UK to vote. If you wouldn't mind, you can go into the, the comments section below this or we'll put a link on the screen now and uh, you'll see uh, a link to go to the voting page. I would say while you're doing this, the, the page we're going to send you to has all the categories for every kind of, you know, what's the best drum kit, the best guitar, the best bass, the best amplifier, um, loads of different stuff. So, and you can vote in as many categories as you want to. Yeah, and when people win, it's a big deal for us in the industry. It's, it's a really cool thing to use in the marketing. Yeah. And a couple of companies have been nominated that are quite surprised they've been nominated, including Chapman Guitars <laughs> with the ML1, which we had no idea about. That's going to be, a, I mean, again, that's incredible. ML1 is up against some, you know, Fenders and Gibsons and Ibanezes and all yeah. kinds of crazy, amazing guitars. But it's a free public vote. So if you guys want to dive onto that voting page, you want to vote for Andertons, you want to vote, you, you want to choose Chapman as your favorite electric guitar. Faith acoustic guitars. Yeah, what and do you a know? vote for Faith, me and Lee is a vote for justice and freedom in this internet and world. dolphins. And dolphins. Always dolphins. Always dolphins. And if I win, and if yeah. he wins, <laughs> we'll be there together, which means we can shoot a video of the award ceremony. You'll get to see Rob in a in a tuxedo. Because <laughs> you have to wear a tuxedo. That could be stage. really interesting. <laughs> they get to see us uh, layered up and drunk and thinking of stupid things to say on stage. And a giant. Maybe. Anyway, Mikasa Surkasa. Not really, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Mikasa Mikasa. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing some of the guitars that Nemps that I've collected over the years. Time for you to go. It's been a pleasure talking to you about this. And um, there you go. Take it easy, guys. See you next time. <laughs>